Carol and I have a lot of fun doing this program, but you know, the other thing that we get to do, as you know, Carol, is to go out and visit some of the chefs in the, and find restaurants, and you got a really good one this time. I did. It was great. So I went to Madison Valley, right here in Seattle, and I visited with Chef Terry Rotero at Rovers. Have you been to Rovers? I have, and it's a wonderful restaurant. Well, Chef Terry is a Seattle icon, of yes, course. Yes, and. One of the wonderful things about this show is not only do we get to cook and eat, but we get to go and visit really great chefs in the back kitchens of the restaurants. And this is where most people don't get to go. So you're going to get some great views of the back kitchen at Rover's Restaurant. And a, 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 a dish I've never heard of. Yes, green asparagus soup with goat cheese. I've never heard of that one. Let's give it a try. We are here today in Madison Valley with chef, restaurateur, and local icon, Terry Rotero, in his restaurant kitchen of Rovers. Welcome, this Thank is you. wonderful. Thank you so Welcome much for to you. inviting us into your kitchen. This is a part of the restaurant that most of us never get to see. So what are we most going to be cooking? Most of them should today? not see. <laughs> <laughs> what are we cooking today? Well, I thought we would be talking about those wonderful Eastern Washington asparagus we get here. Yes. We're so blessed with such great quality such beautiful vegetable and you know it's I don't know I just love them I they, know many different ways in a soup today we're gonna make them but I also like them grilled you know many different preparation oh, yes, yes. From the barbecue on a summer night just absolutely beautiful asparagus so what do you look for when you choose asparagus chef well the first thing you should look for is a hard asparagus you definitely don't want one of those soft mushy asparagus right. that means it's way past its time mm -hmm. also when you get asparagus from the farmer's stand or from pike place or you know any good place like this first thing you do when you get home especially if you're not going to use it right away mm -hmm. is to cut the bottom about a quarter inch with a knife straight through and then keep them in water like, just like a flower yes exactly just like a flower so keep them in your refrigerator if you're going to use it only the next day or so okay. so that it will help them stay hard and you know full and fresh of life tasting yes so the idea behind the soup we're going to do today is actually quite simple basically first you cut the tip off so because we're going to keep the part tender part of the top to do a presentation and last minute flavor in the soup right so what we're going to do is cut the bottom part in smaller pieces blanch it mm -hmm. cool them off dry them off on the side then sweat some onion some garlic and some thyme then drop back all those pieces into it cook it with a little bit of vegetable stock add a little bit of right. cream blend the whole thing Et voilà, we're my, home. My mouth is watering. It sounds like a really <laughs> fabulous combination. If you buy good asparagus fresh mm -hmm. on a farmer's stand in Seattle, there is no way in the world you're going to have a lot of dead weight on, okay. the, on a, an asparagus. Just use your knife and cut the asparagus about you far from the, from the bottom where you feel your knife is having a little resistance on the asparagus. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is all good. Okay. Um, especially if you're making a soup like I just said we were going to make, where you're just trying to get the top spears for presentation and for finishing for presentation so you're cutting about two inch and a half into the asparagus with the reserve these on the side and then the rest we just cut in smaller pieces like this okay and then put that in boiling water so that's the next step we're going to do i got the pot of boiling water working i'm going to reserve these on the side so we put all this in a pot of water that's got a little bit of salt in it and then that is boiling and when you boil, when you cook green vegetable like this, always use a lot of water. Right. Because when it comes to a boil and you drop in your vegetable, the temperature goes down right away. Yes. The more water, the better. It's a bigger bath. It stays hot. It boils faster. Once the um, asparagus, after a few minutes, have been blanched, we put them into the ice bath. And the, and reason, the reason for the ice bath is because it's going to cool them off right away and they're going to keep their bright, bright that green. Color. Can you all see how beautiful and green and bright these are? So from here, we're going to drain these into one of these little plates with some paper towel on it. So the idea is to just take this out of the water and drain the asparagus onto the paper towel. So we don't have a lot of excess water in our soup. That is correct. We don't need more water. We have vegetable stock that we've made that will be added and make a wonderful flavor. Nice. So once we have all the asparagus on the paper towel, you're going to separate the spear that we kept for presentation. Okay. And I'm going to cook the rest of the other pieces of asparagus back in with some onion and some butter. So I'm turning on the fire. 
In that part, I'm going to put a little bit of that butter. Here, let's just remove this. Yeah, all right, I'll just set this here. I'm going to put a little bit of butter in that pan. And then I'm going to put the onions and the garlic right into it. So once the butter is melted to a white foamy stage, right. is when you drop your onion, like this. And you also drop your slivered garlic. And this is what's called sweating the vegetables, correct? You're sweating the onions. Uh, yes, that is so correct. So we're not browning. We're just, we're just giving them, softening them up. Yeah, we're keeping it at the white foamy stage butter. You don't want to okay. go any harder than that. You want to stay at that stage, and you want to make sure that everything cooks down. So as you can see, you know, it keeps that white for me and yellow color of butter and then everything is sweating. And then we, yes. what we do is we add all these pieces of asparagus back into the soup. There you go. Just like this. We give that a little coloring as well. Those are nice and bright green mm. asparagus, aren't they? And yes, and it smells fantastic. Something about sweating the vegetables just oh, yeah. makes it so aromatic. Plus the whole house smells so good. Yes, it does. Love that. So to that, we're going to add a little bit of um, vegetable stock. Look at that. And you, of course, make your own vegetable stock here oh, in yeah. the restaurant, don't well, you? Well, vegetable stock is quite simple yes. and easy to make. Um, if you want to see a good recipe, look in my book. OK, I will do that. <laughs> Rover's cookbook has plenty of good recipes. Now I'm adding some asparagus and I already add blanche. Here's another idea. You know when you're at home, sometimes you cook too much of one thing? Yes. This is a perfect occasion. The next day you buy another bunch of asparagus. Mm -hmm. You've got some leftover diced asparagus. You made a salad the day before, but you had too much. You know, some of it is seasoned, some of it is not. The one that's not, just add it right now into your soup. Ah, oh, great. All you're doing is adding asparagus to your asparagus yes. soup. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Same as if you had some leftover onion, this is the time to use it. This has been cooking for about 15 minutes at the most. Very nice. So what we're trying to do from here is to put this into a blender like this. You want to take all your solids, mm -hmm. strain it, and put it into a blender. And we're going to blend that to a wonderful little puree. Then we will strain. So you need a good, this I put, the liquid goes back onto the stove, mm -hmm. gets reduced a little bit longer. Just like this, we're gonna let okay. it cook down. While we're doing this, we're gonna blend this, this little puree here. That was quite noisy. No, your TV did not have a problem. That was just the motor being so wow. loud. Wow, oh, it smells great. So now, what you're gonna do is train this to the china cup. While I'm finishing the sauce here, I'm making sure it's reducing down. I'm gonna strain it into, a, into your soup as soon as it's reduced enough. So we've got the asparagus that have been blanched. Then they've been sweated some onion, some garlic, some thyme. We put in the asparagus in it. We cook the whole thing together. Once it's cooked, you drain it through a fine hot china cup. You've added creme fraiche to your boiling liquid. You're reducing it down to a nice thickness. We're gonna put it through here. And then the whole thing's gonna get, excuse me one second. It will facilitate your straining. So, Chef, if we don't have a china cap at home, what do you suggest our home chefs use? Uh, just bring it to Rovers. We'll strain it for you. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, um, out, you need to have a fine strainer Very of fine some strainer. kind. You should have one in your yes, kitchen. absolutely. Because in cases like this, it becomes very useful. Asparagus can be fibrous. If all it takes is one or two of them being fibrous in there. And then when you're eating, you're using, you're using the... Uh, right, it's a texture issue. The element issue. of surprise for your guest. And, and the... The silkier you want your super sauce, the finer texture sieve you need. That is correct. Here we go. So we put this straight right cool. onto an ice bath. And then you're just going to twirl it around to okay. cool it off. So we'll have our soup ready. All right. So it's been five minutes you've been stirring that soup. It should be probably cold by now. Yes, and for it's thickened up. It's <laughs> chilling. Yes, it does. It yes. thickens up as it, cold, as it gets colder. So for the goat cheese, I take that cheese, I take goat cheese, put it in a bowl. Let it, I've left it outside for about 10, 15 minutes to room temp. Add nice. a little dash of cream in there. I see some little flecks of things in that goat cheese. Yes, I added a little bit of fresh chopped thyme because I love thyme. Now, that's not in your recipe, but you can definitely add it on. And is that a local goat cheese? It is a local goat cheese. It's Quilly Saskat Goat Cheese Farm Fresh Goat oh, Cheese. Oh, nice. I love that cheese. So the idea for the presentation on this, Carol, now we can take it out of the ice. Can get rid of that bowl. 
And then the idea is that we put that sauce, that soup, into many different containers. We're going to play Martha. I yes, love playing Martha. We're going to dirty every bowl <laughs> in Chef's Kitchen today. Do we need to season this? Is on that, uh, why don't you try it? Tell me if it's got enough salt okay. and pepper. It should be just I a love little this touch. Part. <laughs> mm, maybe just the tiniest bit, but it's just so now fresh remember, tasting. Now remember, you don't want to over salt your soup because you're going to be adding goat cheese. And goat cheese has a little saltiness to it, so just make sure you keep the soup as a low salt um, level. So, obviously, before I do this, the first presentation on this dish. This is great. You're enjoying this? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So look at this, look at what I'm doing here. Make you take two spoons and we make a kernel shape, which is like a football shape, by putting the, the pressing. You've done this a few times, I see. Yes, in my sleep, actually, I think. And then you put that right in the middle of the bowl. You drizzle, you take a, can I get that little? A little. Get rid of this. And then you ladle up that soup, which has now become very thick. Remember, it's just pureed asparagus, a little touch of, um, vegetable stock and some cream and if it's too thick for your liking don't be shy just put a little bit more vegetable stock in it now what I like to drizzle on top is a little bit of that argan oil from uh, Adouche Gourmet Import okay so tell us about argan oil well argan oil is to me one of my favorite toasted nut oil it's really fragrant very delicate it leaves a long-lasting flavor so when you put it on top of a soup suddenly you smell this Oh my goodness. That Isn't is, that beautiful? Yes, it is. It's like magic. It gives a little yes. final touch to your yes. soup. And then the best part is I go to the garden, because I have plenty of different things in my garden, including tulips and herbs, and, and I like to use a little bit of that bronze fennel. That is beautiful. So well, you put a little so bit of that bronze fennel right on top of the goat cheese like this. Mm -hmm. And then, on the other side, using some of those asparagus tips that we've blanched earlier, Reserve them like this. And then you lay them down right on top of the goat cheese, like so. That is beautiful. And then if you want to get fancy on me, and again, remember, we're trying to play Martha here, just put one of those little tulip leaf right at the end of it. Very nice. And then you serve that to your guests. All right, so. Bon appétit. Enjoy, Carol. Thank you. This has been so much fun, playing with the food. Mm. And now getting to eat it. So, if you want to have the asparagus soup, come on down to Rover's and visit with Chef Terry Rotero. Thank you so very much for having us here you today. Are it has been so a blast. Thank you.